Hi guys, so I wanted to show you this video of Matt Hancock, the health secretary, talking about the new testing regime and um, who is going to get tested. So let's hear what he has to say. ...by those in care homes. As we expanded the capacity from just 2,000 tests a day at the start of March to 10,000 tests a day at the start of this month, so we've been able to further expand access. Today, I can go further. We can make Let me just clarify a point. 2,000 tests a day does not mean 2,000 people tested. 10,000 tests a day does not mean automatically 10,000 people are tested. So, for example, yesterday, 22,000 tests were carried out, but 13,000 individuals were tested. So that meant that some people were tested maybe twice, or some tests were thrown away because maybe they weren't accurate. Make it easier, faster and simpler for any essential worker in England who needs a test to get a test. From today, employers of essential workers who will, will be able to go on gov.uk to get a test for any of their staff who need a test. And from Notice he, had said, he has said it twice now, who needs a test. So anyone who needs a test will get a test. Anyone who has staff that needs a test will get a test. Why is he using the word need here? Surely anyone who wants a test will get a test. Now, the problem here is supply. So they have to ration supply. I wish that he would actually come out and say this. It would be much more honest. Just come out and say, we don't have enough tests, so we have to ration them. So we're going to limit the, the people who will get tested. Be, be frank about it. Otherwise, people think, well, maybe I don't need a test. Everyone in the country needs a test. There isn't some criteria that need the test and others who don't need the test. Everyone should be tested, or as close as possible to everyone should be tested. Because everyone has the possibility to infect someone else if they are infected. No matter how much we respect social distancing, there is always a risk that we will infect others. So there is no group who need a test and another group who don't need a test. Unfortunately, because there is a shortage, you have to ration who gets a test and who doesn't. You have to, but you have to be honest with the public. This is being slightly dishonest with the public. He said, yes, we started off with 2,000 tests, we've ramped it up to um, 10,000, and we're, now we're going to ramp it up to 100,000 or whatever. But you have to be honest with the public and say, look, we don't have enough tests, so we have to limit who's going, who's going to get it. Unfortunately, we would like to test everyone, but we can't do that. From tomorrow, any essential workers who need a test will be able to book an appointment on gov.uk themselves directly. This all applies for people in essential workers' households too who need a test. Once again, he's saying who need a test because they, I haven't seen the website, but I can imagine there will be some criteria in order for you to, to get a test. It won't be automatic. It would probably, do you have symptoms? <laughs> and I'm laughing because Symptoms is the point where we we think you probably have uh, uh, the virus, but that's no good if we want to stop the virus, or it's, it, it makes the, stopping the virus much more difficult. The best case scenario, the best way to deal with this is to test as many people as possible. Some people who may be asymptomatic are isolated, self-isolated, uh, or, or isolated by the health service. And that helps to stop the spread. Because if we have a lot of people walking around who are asymptomatic, they're going to spread the virus. If, unless we test them, we don't know if they are infected. Many people could be infected 
and don't show any symptoms at all. It doesn't mean that they're they're uh, they're in a period of time in a period of the infection where they are asymptomatic and eventually they will show symptoms. It's possible that there are people walking around who are uh, infectious, but uh, are not showing any symptoms, and those people will never be tested according to this criteria. But they're still infecting people. It's all part of getting Britain back on her feet. Those included as essential workers will be based... So you see here, it's not about getting... Uh, it's about getting the country back on its feet. Not about curing people. Not about stopping this virus. I think, in a way, they have thrown in the towel here. Because they realise that they approach the, the problem too late. They have insufficient... Uh, materials for testing. So they're going to test a small number and just leave it at that. He's talking about ramping up to 100,000 tests a day by the end of the month, but that's impossible or almost impossible because you're, you're only testing small numbers at the moment. Yesterday, 22,000. How are you going to get up to 100,000 tests a day? And where are these tests coming from if you're going to have 100,000 100, tests a day by the end of the month? I, I, I have a feeling that this is just smoke and mirrors here. He's telling people, yeah, we're going to re arrive at this target. And then when the end of the month comes, oh, we missed it by a few thousand. But don't worry, we'll set a new target and hope that people just forget about it. I, I believe they've thrown in the towel here. They're not interested in testing, because if they were, they would uh, be much more serious about it. They would be testing as many people as possible, but they're not. The tests are extremely rationed, and that's extremely uh, dangerous, and it's the wrong approach, I think. Based on the list for schools and education set out on gov.uk, the whole process will be free. And once you've entered your details on the website, you'll get a text or an email inviting you to book an appointment. After you've had your test, results will be sent out by text and a help desk will be available to deal with queries. People who can't go online can still apply through their employer. I want to make it as easy as possible for people to get a test, not least because we're talking about people who are ill. Our network of regions... We're talking about people who are ill. So he's giving away the game here. People who are symptomatic. If people if people are asymptomatic, they don't feel that they're ill. So they will not get a test, probably. So I'm speculating here because I haven't seen the website. The website isn't available yet. From the time I'm making this video. I, I have to read between the lines here. First, he talked about who needs a test will get a test. Not we will give a test to everyone within a criteria. Even if it was, we will give all essential workers a test, or we will give all NHS staff a test. No, it's all who need a test. But how can the public know if they need something if they don't, if they don't have the information such as the results of a test to know if they're infected or not? General test sites has now reached over 30 locations right across the UK and more being set up each day. And I just want to take this moment to applaud the private companies who've been involved, as well as my team, the team in Public Health in England and the NHS. Boots, Amazon, Thermo Fisher, Randox, Roche, Oxford Nanopore, GSK, and AstraZeneca, they've really stepped up to the mark, and I'm grateful to each and every one. We're also introducing home test kits, and with the support of the armed forces, mobile testing sites too. The armed forces and the MOD have played a vital role here and I want to pay tribute to their work. I thought that at yesterday's briefing, General... Okay, but where are these mobile units? When will they be available? Where are they going to be testing? I, I agree, this would be a good idea. I think in every village, in every town, there should be a place where members of the public can come and get tested. But 
what is the problem here? Is the problem insufficient test equipment? I think it is. Or is it that you just can't be bothered to invest in testing? Because if you look at the narrative up until this moment, the narrative was, we're going to go with herd immunity. So not testing. We'll just let everyone get infected and it will run through the population and um, it will burn itself out. And we will build up an immunity uh, to that. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, there isn't enough data and evidence to support that hypothesis. So you're, you started off with an idea that wasn't based on science. It was based on a hunch and it was going to put a lot of people at risk. Then it moved into a, a new type of um, antibody test. Yeah, we're going to see, we're going to, we're not going to test people for COVID. We're going to test people for the antibodies. So the antibodies showing people who had developed antibodies against uh, the virus and had recovered. And then we'll know how, uh, if people recovered or not. But that doesn't, that only um, gives you a certain amount of data. It doesn't give you enough to deal with crisis in general. And also there was an issue about the reliability of the testing equipment regarding antibody testing. And now you're talking about testing frontline service uh, and essential staff if they need it. So the narrative is is continually changing and it seems to be a way of um, let's throw something against the wall and see what sticks. Sir Nick Carter when he said that coronavirus had presented the single greatest logistical challenge in his 40 years of service. I thought that spoke the truth. Our armed forces have played their part in rising to this challenge and I want to thank them all. In addition to testing essential workers we're also using testing to find out how many people have coronavirus and how many people have had coronavirus. These are critical pieces of information to inform our battle against this novel virus and that we'll use to learn and we keep learning about every day. This week we've begun one of the biggest virus infection and antibody studies that this country has ever seen. This is a joint project with the Office for National Statistics bringing their experience of running large household surveys and the University of Oxford bringing... Okay, I, I'm going to end the video here, but um, I'll leave a link in the description if you, want the, if you want to watch all of it. But there is no mention of what we have done wrong. There's no mention of, for example, uh, the mistakes that were made, for example, regarding reaching out to other countries to understand what they had done right that could that we could have done instead i know it's not this he's a politician he's not going he's not here to genuflect to the public okay but a lot of mistakes have been made a lot of chances to help to have tools to fight this virus were thrown away at the in, at the very beginning at the very important stage when it was uh, it was the most likely chance you had to confront the virus in the, more aggressively. Now you're playing catch up. Now you're attempting to uh, move the goalposts for the, vi for the virus, but um, it's ahead of you. So let me know in the comments, guys, as always, uh, your comments are much appreciated. I do recommend watching the entire video um, so you get the full context. But for me, the core issue here is certain people will be tested according to the need they have. But the need will be defined by the government, not by the citizens themselves. Once again, this is the wrong approach because you need to test as many people as possible, not just NHS staff, not just essential workers. Yes, of course, they have to be tested. And if there's a rationing, they have to be tested first. But you have to be honest with the public and say, 
we have to ration the tests because we don't have enough. Maybe you can even take that further step and say, because we made mistakes. But unfortunately, we're not going to hear him say that.